The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. Welcome, my brother, my brother, me and the show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. I'm your sweet baby brother and 30 under 30 media luminary, Griffin McElroy. It's summertime. And the living is easy. This is cool. This is this is this is cool. This is cool. That one was this, that one was pretty fucking cool, Juice. It was a cool song. I'm gonna burn that onto my CDs later. I'm gonna put that up on Kazaa for other people to listen to. That's good shit, man. So it's summertime basically, and this is the my brother, my brother, me summertime preview. A lot of people can't even put a fucking t shirt on until we tell them how to. So yeah. uh, it's basically summertime, uh, pools. We have been sw- getting so many emails and tweets saying, Will the living be easy this year? People and Justin know. just People went ahead know. and gave that away right off the top. Some emailed Living like, "Living will be easy." It hasn't been. It's been about three years and change <laughs> since the living's been easy. The living hasn't been especially easy. But let me just say, you're allowed to sweat. You don't need our permission to yes. have a good summertime sweat. Some of this true. stuff is getting way, way out of hand. Yeah, but true. It, I think it is time for us to give our picks uh, for summer 2019. Um, and I'm going to start. With uh, wet chairs, wet way to, chairs. Way to Tell me about heat. this trend. Public pools in private pools. Out, 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 out. Wet chairs. You sit on them. The Ooh. moistness of it comes on to you. And uh, if you can do it somewhere where there's a breeze or a fan, even better. But the chair is going to be in 2019. The chair is going to be wet, folks. So can I can I give you another big? Uh, maybe this might even be a summer surprise uh, of mm. what's in and what's out. The sun's out. Wow. Yeah. That's fun. It's out. The sun's <laughs> out. Yep. And also guns out. Oh, sun guns are, have been out. Yes. Except for water guns, and even those are on thin ice. The family towel. Okay. Wait. It's 2019. You can't spend uh, uh, the extra energy to wash a bunch of towels uh-huh. for your whole family. Yep. Okay. The detergent is terrible. The water you use is terrible. The electricity you use is terrible. Family towel. One day. Hey, towel. kids, everybody get underneath this massive towel and let's get dry as a family. We're all going to go into the arcade together. Mm-hmm. And they don't like our wet trunks in there, do they? <laughs> they are. They don't like our wet family. And we're going to nice. show them that we can be as dry as any other family in there with this huge shared towel. Take that. Billy Bob's or whatever. It's, it's themed to things everybody in the family likes. There's a Paw Patrol corner and a bunch of cigars in the middle. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, for little brother. That's for my little brother who loves to smoke. I I do I do. I love that shit, man. The big cigarettes. Now, Justin, it kind of sounds like you're describing potentially like a quilt towel. It's a family towel. It's and a that's family towel, Travis. It's not my trend. Travis, it's just what's on trend this year. These are fucking I can't, years. Can I tell I don't you? I have a bunch of excuses for it. This is another uh, what's out, uh, sand buckets. What's in, sand suitcases. So we're putting sand in suitcases in 2019, folks. That's correct. How, that's fucking, because- how fucking random is that? <laughs> well, but here's what it is, Griffin. Here's what we really, when you put sand in buckets, what are you gonna do when it's time to go home? You're gonna take that might spill out of the bucket, but if you put it in a suitcase, you can zip that closed, keep that sand for next time. Mm, I'll tell you what's out. Popsicles <laughs> are out. Get out of here, popsicles. What's in their place? Slopsicles, Justin. Ooh. What's a slopsicle? Well, you know how they make a popsicle with a, 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 some sort of fruit juice, typically. Uh huh. Slopsicle can get a little bit 
a little bit sillier than that, I guess. Like what? This is this. Well, have, let me bring this up. Savory popsicles. What's going on okay. with these things? And huh, they don't okay. exist. Like but a I'm, borscht? I'm, I'm, a borscht would be totally, totally dope. I'm sitting by the pool, and I scoff at it and go sit in my wet chair, and I'm beating the heat, but I could really use a treat. But not a sweet treat, a savory, savory sort of uh, chicken stock popsicle, a mm-hmm. slopsicle, if you will. Now we're cooking with summer gas. I like that. Hey, hey, mom and dad, the newest food trend for your family this summer, baked steak. Ooh. Bake it. <laughs> so the grill in, throw, throw the grill. Throw grill in a well. Throw it in the pool because you're not going to need either of these fucking things anymore. You don't eat the pool, and you don't eat the grill, because your family's going to be so busy eating baked steak, they're never going to get wet again. You know what else it's, is out out this summer? Cannibalism. What? It's out. Yes. Don't stop eating the folks. Stop start it. Eating we had, this a, lot, we had steak. A, a, a lot of fun with that in 2018, but it's over it's now. It's done. And listen, listen, we know all the celebrities were into cannibalism in 2018, but they're off it now. And we shouldn't have endorsed it. On our you show last have. year. I feel Because it's terrible. murder, folks. It is murder. It was always murder. Even um, if you're doing free-range, farm-to-table cannibalism, it's still bad. Still pretty bad. So let me go ahead and say, I hope this one doesn't turn out like cannibalism, but tank tops are out and stank tops are in. Now, And I know it seems like I'm just adding S to the just common summer things, but this uh-huh. is a tank top that does already have a, quite a scent to it. Hey, it's 2019, and this year... Nobody worth their salt is using wild seagulls to give their pool a beachy feel. <laughs> we all had a lot of fun in 2018 using mm-hmm. wild seagulls that we had captured in the wild and then then tied to lawn chairs to give our pool a beachy feel. We're not doing that anymore. Stop it's cruel. doing that. Stop it. <laughs> Go untie those birds <laughs> and drive them back to Myrtle Beach in your car. They'll appreciate it, and everyone will think you're a hero for returning those birds. You know what else is out? What? Slip and slides. Slip and slides are out. You know what's in? Huh? Grip and stands. <laughs> We're gonna put down some of those like things you put in your shower on your slip and slide. You're gonna take a run at it, but then oh, good. Plenty of grip there, even though the surface is wet, and you're going to stand confidently and finish your beverage. Sight gags. Let's deal with it. The hat with two beer cans. Mm -hmm. Out. (laughs) Pretending to drink from an empty koozie. In. Very funny this year. Very funny. Out. Shirt that says FBI, Federal Body Inspector. In. Shirt that says FBI, Federal Bible Inspector. Ooh. That's yeah. in. A shirt that says FBI, Federal Bureau of Investigation. That's in. It's funny. Songs. Let's do it. Baby Shark. Out. Adult Dog. In. Ooh. That's the new that's the new summer anthem. Adult Dog. Too many beans. In. Not enough beans. Out. LMFAO. Out. L Y L A S. In. LMFAO is back. Oh well shit. You just, Sorry, you're back just in. Really no, we just you. we just let him back in. And that's how fast these trends move, folks. <laughs> it's a very fast thing. The adult dog died. Out. Cucumbers. In. Newcumbers. Now, what are newcumbers? They're, I assume it's cucumbers I just bought. Okay, got it. I got. You I had some cucumbers cu- in my fridge, and they went bad, <laughs> and they got real soft, and I had to throw them away, and then throw I had to go out. buy newcumbers. Yep, these are Travis's good new cucumbers. My newcumbers. I Those think- are our uh, summer trends for 2019. Uh, I'm excited. I hope you're excited. But mainly, this is an advice show. Uh, so we, you know, we're, that's what we're going to be predominantly doing. That's still on trend, as on trend as it ever has been uh, in 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 this this time of uh, change and evolution. Uh, some things remain the same, and, and advice is one of those for us. Here's a question from you, our listening audience. If you've got a query that we can help with. Uh, please email mbmbam at maximumfund.org. I'm a happily married man, and right now my wife and I aren't looking to have kids. Sometimes, however, my wife will watch her friend's kids for them. She is great with kids, and even though I don't feel I am, the kids seem to like me too. So Brag. much so that they like drawing us pictures. Naturally, you put them on the fridge like a good adult should. 
how long do I keep these pictures on the fridge? I have no emotional attachment <laughs> to them, but I also don't want to hurt their feelings. Being parents yourselves, I figured you would have some insight into the matter. Help me, brothers. What's the statute of limitations on kids' drawings when you don't have kids? That's from Coloring Calamity in Colorado Springs. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we can, okay. ta- we can tackle this. Yeah. Um, how many... If I were to try to count... If I had one American dollar for every piece of paper printed out that had a drawing of a bug, let's say a caterpillar or a ladybug on it, that um, my little guy had splotched some not even correct color paint nowhere even close to this fucking (laughs) bug. Not even not even touching, not even accidentally getting within the lines even a little bit. Um, I could retire from all work and buy the United States and run it like some sort of mad emperor. Um, so like, I don't, ha- if I hung all of these on the fridge, the fridge o- would fall over with the last one I hang and kill me. So like, I can't do all of them. It's t- See, uh, Charlie just finished her first year of preschool and so she brought home treasures almost every day and my wife and i have had this ongoing debate that i feel like i can tell when she put a lot of heart into mm-hmm. a piece mm-hmm. and when she was just kind of watching the clock yes. letting it tick down to 1 30 and she's gonna dip out and be like oh i guess i can't finish them all i don't care anyway bye suckers <laughs> bye <laughs> have a nice nap idiots my- i'm going home you gotta appreciate it to the face but then uh, the refrigerator that's daddy's box. <laughs> That's where daddy keeps his favorite stuff. And <laughs> if it's going to go up on daddy's favorite box, like, you know, I want to I want to know that I want to know that the artist had intent. I want right. to know that my son yes. didn't just sort of splorch some shit down while he was sort of absent-mindedly just thinking about Pikachu as he is wont to do <laughs> constantly. This, because because he's here's my, the because th- he's my wonderful boy. Here's the thing, question asker. Okay? The next time that kid comes to your house, he's not gonna be like, hey, Mr. Derek, uh, where the fuck is my picture? Like, that's- Unless he is. Unless he's the kind of kid who would do that. Ooh. Unless he's a real fucking minkus that's gonna put you on blast. I would say, but if he comes back and he's like, where is it? Just say, I submitted it to the local gallery for consideration. That's good. Oh, that's good. Right now, well, it's not good, but it's something. It's something you can try. It's lying uh, to a child. Yeah, I mean, that's what it is. Unless I, you did. I've kind of gotten pretty good at just throwing stuff away secretly. You know that one scene from Now You See Me where they're like passing the card mm-hmm. all around? That um, shit is so cool. Oh it's my so God. fucking cool. That's me with like bad pictures of rainbows. Mm-hmm. Just like slip it, at, like no one's looking. It's behind you. What's that over there? Trash. <laughs> <laughs> I I have also gotten good at that uh, with eating food off of my daughter's plate that she's not going to eat, oh, but also yeah. refuses to let me eat. Oh my mm. god! Yeah, I am like the Harlem Globetrotters, just like taking a little chunk of meatloaf off Henry's plate and like twirling it around his head so he gets dizzy and he's like, "Wait, what? Where's it? Oh, it's gone." Okay, who cares? And I'm like, "Yeah, I care. <laughs> right. I care about the delicious Trader Joe's meatloaf flavor I have now." Notorious food thieves, the Harlem Globetrotters. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, do you guys want a Yahoo? Uh, did we? I mean, I don't think. Here's what I've ended up doing. Okay. Get a big Tupperware thing, just a gigantic, just the biggest one you can find, and then just keep throwing things into it. I'm making it's um it's a debt that I'm building against my future self, but it's not current my problem. But it's not it's so, my future problem. It's not because one time, like four or five years ago, our papa brought me a cardboard box full of my like first grade bullshit, and he said, "I thought you would want this." Okay, but he brought you a box of 3% of your first grade bullshit. I don't know. The box was full. What if you peeked then? There's no way to know. You think if I had gone through that and been like, oh, God, this is good. This is so much better than this shit I'm creating now. I like Travis's old shit. (laughs) Yeah, I like like, uh, Turkey Hand. (laughs) It was a good Turkey Hand. Man, ever no. since Turkey Hand, it's all been so fucking downhill. Like, a lot of stuff was derivative of Turkey Hand. And these days, it's just like, at our live shows, Travis busts out Turkey Hand. And it's like, oh, God, man. Remember when Travis said, knock, knock. Dad said, who's there? And Travis said, 
knife. Mm-hmm. And dad said, knife who? And Travis said, would you rather work nightly or knifely? A real joke that that's, three-year-old Travis told. That's, and that's all, and you've never done anything that good <laughs> on this so show, good. Travis. No. It's what a really it? excellent, it subverts, it's an excellent <laughs> joke that I'm still laughing about to this day. Yes. I memorized it verbatim. It's such an excellent joke. And do you remember when that car was going to hit me and you lifted it up from the back of the wheels of it like Hancock? When you yeah, were five? I try not to do that anymore though, just because of my back. You know, when I and was that's it. three, like you my peaked, guess. you were so. And do you remember how fucking cut and handsome you were at five? <laughs> yeah. And now you are like just a just a shambling mess of bones and skin. I know. Remember? Yes. Remember when you wrote the treatment for Hancock? Yes. And you sold it, and it sat on the blacklist for twenty years, but you made like a ton of fucking cash. I remember that, and uh, I also remember, and I don't know why they didn't credit it as based off a true story, like it originally mm-hmm. said on the manuscript when I wrote it, of like, this is my life. I was, I got my uh, oil changed, and the place that I get my oil changed at, uh, I was started to sit down in like the, the hangout area where you wait for your car to be healthy and ready for you again, mm-hmm. and they did have a TV that was showing Hancock, and it, it mystified me that that was the choice that they had made for film to watch in 2019 in their waiting room so i called a lift and i came home where <laughs> there was no hancock <laughs> do you want a yahoo yes here's a yahoo that was uh sent in by emma Kant. thank you emma it's yahoo answers user uh cuddle punch who asks what would a heaven for elephants be like hmm. what would a heaven for elephants be like let's get this out of the way peanuts not funny Next not answer. Funny. Not uh, not funny. I think that what if in Elephant Heaven everything was scaled to their size? Because like huh. right now, if an elephant tried to go into an office building, it would just be a fiasco, right? The hallways would be too narrow. Oh, the it'd doors be a are mess. too small. It'd be right? a mess. Yeah. But this is like a world in which the elephant can get in an elevator. You know what I mean? And then an elephant, an elef- an elevator. No, no one makes that joke because it's fucking heaven, Griffin, for elephants. No one's there's making... probably some elephants that would find that pretty funny. They go to hell. Here's all I'm saying. An elephant never forgets. Okay. And elephant will be in heaven for eternity. So I ha- an ele- elephant in heaven is simultaneously living the entirety of existence as it understands it at all times. Not only is there an eternity ahead of it, there's an eternity of moments that are in its past that are inescapable. Huh, yeah. Right? Think about that for a second. It never forgets. So probably they would need some way to rectify that, I imagine. <laughs> Maybe Maybe want it. That, I heaven. think Elephant Heaven is the ability to forget. Yeah, that's yeah, all okay. I'm saying is like they just want to be able to forget something. Welcome to heaven. Wait, what did you say? <gasps> oh, oh <laughs> tight. <Yeah>. Awesome. <laughs> I tell you this one thing about moment. I'll tell you one thing that I know for certain about Elephant Heaven, and it's that the clouds have to be extremely thick. The, thick clouds. They're very, very, very thick clouds, or else these bad boys are just gonna poof, right through them because of their uh, considerable weight. Thick, thick clouds. Well, uh... you know what would be cool is if, as eat when you die, when you're an elephant. Um, which is the saddest thing I can imagine, but then you're up in elephant. If you die when you're an elephant, you die in real life. Did you know that? <laughs> I think you get walked into the, 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 well, it wouldn't be pearl. Cause I think that's a little too close to ivory it would be made out of some badass shit that, uh, elephants like, Adam but elephant, Sa- uh, elephant St. Peter or St. Peanut is like, Oh, we're well, right this way. And I'll lead you into elephant heaven. Uh, and on the way in, uh, you have to go through the the border here, and the border is um, uh, it's just Thomas Edison, and he has his nuts up on a table, <laughs> and you get to step right on them. <laughs> you step right on them as you go in, and everybody gets to do one. So that's what would be one thing you get. Is that Thomas Edison's hell or heaven? Thomas he Edison, he might be. <laughs> listen. We're not here to kink shame anybody. We're, you know, as accepting as the next one. But, like, that's a pretty intense... It's a fun kink, but you can only do it once, it seems like. Well, Unless on that's Earth. Right. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. His groin just reforms, and he's ready for a number, another rumba, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't think he would like that. I think that would probably be his hell. 
Do you think that if you're an elephant and you're like sick or getting a little old and like you suddenly realize that you've just walked to the elephant graveyard, do you think you're like, oh, damn it, and then you die? <laughs> ah, shoot. Why did I do <laughs> I shouldn't have come. Well, think about that. Like, if every time a human being was about to die, we just found ourselves walking towards a cemetery. And yeah. you're like, oh, well, ah, I guess this is it. Shit. Nah, I'm going man. this way for some reason. Oh, bummer. I wish I could turn around, but uh, I guess ah, I'm... Frick, I just like, I was walking to Quiznos, just kind of lost my train of thought. <laughs> nah, farts. Uh... <laughs> But then you get to stomp on Tommy Ed's balls, and that's pretty righteous for me. <laughs> Shoot, man, I'd want that to be my... I'm, I'm not a fan of the gentleman. I would like that waiting for me at the pearly gates. <laughs> I think we all get... I mean, we're going to be up there for a while. We have... There's time for everything. So every week... You can week, get over there and step on those balls. You get no a, problem. You get a little bulletin slid under your door every week, and it lets you know a schedule of who's going to be there for ball step. And then also like, you got to be separated into teams. So like I'm on the Indigo team, Travis and Justin, you're both on the blue team. So you get to like share the experience and you guys get to go at four fifteen, and then you do, you do get to go stomp on Tommy Ed's balls. It's, and it's is it really always, is it always Thomas Edison? No, there's going to, they're going to cycle people in and out. Yeah. Okay. Are they all going to be inventors? Most of them are inventors. <laughs> yeah. Like the guy who made guns, his nuts are donezo. <laughs> uh, the devil, the devil gonna come up there because boy, his works are pretty naughty, I think. So let me get on those nuts. <laughs> oh, crap. Here's another question. I had a party at my house tonight and everyone is left except two people. Now I'm laying on the floor waiting for these two people to leave so I can go to bed. They said they need some time to sober up, which is understandable. We don't want people to drive drunk. But they both just opened another drink. How do I get them to leave? That's from Drowsy in Denver. That's why the f- he can't just go to bed, can he? Can't just go to bed? Just go to sleep. Um. Yeah, I mean, that's one rude option. I mean, Semitonic didn't do all this work for you not to play their song. For people, Thank you. for yes. this exact scenario, this is this exact situation. Wow. And what's gr- what's great about that song is not only is it direct and to the point, like hey, it's closing time, but it is of such a quality that the more it is repeated, the harder it becomes to listen to. Like the first time you hear it, you get this like nostalgic, like oh, closing time, and then the second time you're like oh, it's closing time, and then by like the third, fourth, fifth time, you're like I have to get out of here. Yeah. Like it is, it is an effective tool, uh, as well as being a direct message. I can listen. To that. I could hear that track about five times. Yeah, before it even started to irritate me, though. No, I think I would way. be into it for about the f- fifteen minutes. You're a strong man. It's a good fucking track. It's a though. great track. Semi Sonic's one of Semi Sonic's best. I'd argue. <laughs> I think you need to bump into them to make the drink spill, because that works for me most of the time, and. You're laying on the floor now, so that's going to be a tricky situation. <laughs> you are going to have to get up and walk directly over to where they are, probably on the couch. And wow, bumping into somebody while they're sitting on a couch is going to be pretty tough. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, maybe an earthquake. Can you simulate an earthquake or say you have vertigo and just sort of spill right into their four locos or whatever? Call them an Uber, maybe, but that's expensive. Hmm. Call them names. No, nah, I don't think you want to be mean. Turn on some TV show that you're watching right now to the episode that you're watching, uh-huh. right? Oh, that's good. That would get me to leave any room. Oh, my God, yes. Yeah. Somebody turns it on, and they're like, uh, what are you watch- watching? And it's like, oh, this is season four, episode three of Damages. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, <laughs> goodbye. <then." laughs> I, I don't want the, you know, the first three seasons and change of Damages to be spoilt <laughs> for me, so I'm going to just go ahead and go. I might, I might have watched Damages. I would leave a room where Rufus from Bill and Ted was reading winning lotto numbers if it was playing a TV show that I had not seen in the middle of the series. Hands down, no, no matter what, I'm no out. matter what the show is, I may no never intent watch to watch it. it. Doesn't yes, matter. Exactly. Might never watch it. Like me and da- that's boys. That's why I said damages. <laughs>
They're I'm just, good performances. The thing is, is like I know myself well enough to know that there is no show on earth that there is zero percent chance I might accidentally Sunday start watching. Yeah, yeah. I will get nasty. I mean, that happened. I was on an airplane and the person next to me was watching an episode of Lucifer, and I thought. All right, and I've right. since watched three seasons of Lucifer. See, so, that's how they get you. Yes, they, Glenn they Close seed can... people all over airplanes to watch it. Glenn Close is going to get me when I'm not watching with her damages. Mm-hmm. She'll mm-hmm. do them to me. The thumbnail for damages on the Amazon app. I will go there and watch my Americans show or my Mister Robot, and then the whole time it's going to be like, "Hey, we recommend damages." Yeah. And damages has a woman's face, only it's cracked in half. And peeking out in the chasm there is Glenn Close's face, and she's given a shh. And so in my mind, which has never absorbed any damages whatsoever, this is the scariest show imaginable. Mm -hmm. This is where Glenn Close nests inside of your brain and smashes through your face. It's like some sort of H.R. Giger creation. So you have picked up some of it. I guess I've seen I, some there's damages. some I guess I have yes. I feel I like Scandal Scandal's been trying to get me for years. Scandal has been like laying like there's boxes propped up on sticks with like treats underneath them for me that are just <laughs> labeled Scandal. And they're all over my house. Yeah. Scandal will get you too. Well, hey, let's take a brief uh pause. Can we do that to go head on over to the uh the money zone? Sure. Uh sure, yes. Hey, Justin, what's, up, what's a website that you use frequently? Uh, a website I use frequently? Um, pa- eBay. eBay. All right. Well, why don't you start eBay 2, the newer, <laughs> better version of eBay? What's stopping you? Nothing, I guess. Thank you. That's a really good point. Okay. Maybe use Squarespace. Well, wait, I did think of one thing. I thought of one okay. thing. Okay. <laughs> I the uh, I don't know how to make one. Oh, okay. Funny you should mention that. Um, oh, I'm seeing here in the copy just as, uh, that, uh, that one of our sponsors is Squarespace. Uh, using Squarespace, Ooh. yeah, you can use it to build a website like eBay too. Or fuck, this is a good commercial. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't hear Griffin over the sound of him signing up for Squarespace. Yeah, because yeah. he's going to use it to show, showcase his work using on like Instagram too, or promote your physical or online business like eBay too, or announce an upcoming event or special project uh, like Fire Festival too. Um, and Squarespace does this by giving you beautiful customizable templates created by world class designers. Powerful e-commerce functionality that lets you sell anything online and everything optimized for mobile right out of the box. Analytics that help you grow in real time and 24-7 awards winning customer support. Make it stand out. Stand out with a beautiful website from Squarespace. So head to, go to, or check out squarespace.com slash my brother for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code my brother, all one word, to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. I just want to take everyone inside the 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 show for a second. In the, the there's sometimes there are certain sentences you have to say in these ads. Mm-hmm. And in the, in the ad here, they're called a call to action. And in the Squarespace call to action, it's head to slash go to slash check out squarespace.com slash my brother. And Travis just elected to do them all. I couldn't pick and one. And let you, the listener, kind of sort through. I couldn't pick one. It's right. choose your own call to action. You know, maybe you like to head to stuff. Maybe you like to go to stuff. Maybe you like to check out stuff. I don't want to make that decision for you. Like Travis said, check out. You're like, I've never checked out anything in my life. How dare you, sir? How, How dare you? you? I'll head there, but certainly not check Check it out. I, I might just, go to if the circumstances are correct. <laughs> I just got an email that a very special box is coming my way, and that box is going to be full of handsome clothes that are going to look slick on my bod, and that is because I am a user of Stitch Fix, and I think everybody should be because you get really nice-looking stuff. You can expand your sort of style palette if you want, and it's exciting to get these boxes, and then if you don't like what's in the box, you know, you only like a few things, you pay, only pay for the stuff you keep. It's really, really slick. And you also have a personal stylist that's going to help you, like, figure out, like, what looks good 
on you uh, and, and they have all kinds of good clothing brands and it's super easy and super fun. We all have a bunch of Stitch Fix. I think I'm wearing, let me see. I'm wearing a Stitch Fix shirt right now. It's a handsome uh, button down, uh, dark blue Oxford with some pineapple or uh, pine, what are the palm trees on it? So that looks good. Wait, Summertime. I'm fun. wearing a palm tree Stitch Fix shirt too. Ah, shit. Whoa. Uh oh. So it's good shirt and the clothes are great and uh, shipping and exchanges and returns are always free. So get started today at stitchfix.com slash my brother and get an extra 25% off when you keep everything in your box. That's stitchfix.com slash my brother. One last time, stitchfix.com slash my brother. Well, Alexis, we got big news. Uh oh. Season one, done. It's over. Season two, Coming at you hot. Three years after. <laughs> three right and a half. Season three one. Right. almost four years. All right. And now, listen, here at Can I Pet Your Dog, the Spanish yes. podcast, our seasons run for three and a half years. <laughs> and then in season two, we come at you with new hot co-hosts named you. Hi, I'm Alexis. <laughs> and I also have uh, uh, field trip. Dog tech. Yeah. Dog news. Dog news. Celebrity guests. Oh, big shots. Will not let them talk about their resume. Nope. Only yeah, the dogs. Only the dogs. I mean, if ever you were going to get into Can I Pet Your Dog, now's the time. Get in here every Tuesday at MaximumFun.org. I have a Yahoo here. Uh, Can I read? Uh, oh, what did you do? Nothing. Did you want to do a question? No, I wanted to do one of my patented bits. All right, do it then. What's stopping you? you? Well, okay. Good. Well, I I just don't like to interrupt with them. I feel like that was really irritating everybody. So I just stopped trying to interrupt with them. Who is that irritate? I'm I we were the people you interrupted and I thought it was I want to munch. Squad. Did you squad? I want to munch. Squad. Nailed it. Toronto! I'm so excited to uh still on the farewell tour for Munch Squad. Uh, as we continue to sunset this great bit. But before the sun goes down, sun's coming up because it's summertime, and I've got two great ice cream-related newses for you, the people. The first up is a quick hit, a Munch Squad Jr., if you will. Uh, Baskin Robbins has Stranger Things-inspired flavors. Ew. For, Ego waffle, yeah. Like a waffle? Very good, Griffin. Eleven's Heaven is a waffle cone flavored ice cream with chocolate coated sugar cone pieces and chocolate icing flavored ribbon. So that's called Eleven's Heaven because the character on that show is fictional and loves waffles. Can I guess one? There's up- Can I guess one? Yeah. Dead person. Yeah. Dead up- teen. <laughs> dead teen. <laughs> very <laughs> Dead teen. No, very close. Upside down pralines. Chocolate ice cream what? with praline pecans and chocolate caramel flavored ribbon. I don't know why that's from the upside down. That, yeah, what, what are, is that? What's thematically? How does that? I don't understand. We're not. We're not done. The press release here says, um, because e- after all, even Demogorgons love ice cream. No, fuck you. So, <laughs> they don't. Well, here's the items that they have because it's not just about flavors. It's about it's about items, and some of these are just so. F- okay, so there's an upside down Sunday. There's a Demogorgon Sunday. Hey, all right. There's Briar's House Lights Polar Pizza Ice Cream Treat. Shit, yes. What? Yes, you can't say like an object that isn't ice There's cream in your ice cream name. Briar's House Lights Polar Pizza Ice Cream Treat. <laughs> what? Is that all of it? Is it all one thing? Briar's House Lights Polar Pizza Ice Cream Treat. <laughs> oh, if, if it was just like, called bu- Polar Pizza Ice Cream Treat, know, that would be a lot. Do you remember when... Remember when Hey, nineties kids! Remember when? Remember when Winona Ryder hung up a bunch of lights to contact the ghost of her dead son in the demon dimension? Well, good news, we done made a polar pizza about it. Come on down to Baskin Robbins, <laughs> USS Butterscotch Quartz. What? I have watched every episode of this show. No fucking idea. I no fucking idea. <laughs> Eleven Aid Freeze. Eleven Aid. Ref- Eleven Aid. Cause fuck it, <laughs> fuck it all. We're done. We're 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 sending this show into the fucking ground. <laughs> Exclusive Stranger Things merchandise, 
including a one-of-a-kind Steve Funko figure. <laughs> All right. Mm. Now, okay, it, what they mean is a Funko figure of the character Steve, oh. but what they have done is combined two words in very close, close proximity to make the name Steve Funko, which sounds like the owner of the company. Um, there's, a, there's also collectible containers. We wanted to give fans a taste of the new season of Stranger Things and are thrilled to partner with Netflix to give customers across the country an experience straight out of Hawkins, Indiana. Mm. Whether you love the show that says Carol Austin, Vice President of Marketing for Baskin Robbins, whether you love the show or just love some seriously delicious ice cream creations, we've got something for everyone because those are the two kinds of people that are on Earth. Uh, and that is that was supposed to be the Munchquad Junior, but it's so wild. I don't think I have time to do the other one, um, which is perhaps wilder. Well, I gotta but, hear it, but keep it tight. Dairy Queen has unveiled a line of of box of happy subscription box. <laughs> box of happy. Listen to this because it's really challenging. DQboxofhappy dot com. <laughs> you go there. You know. You know how Dairy Queen's a place that has chicken tenders and blizzards, right? Uh huh. Okay. Well, now it's a place where, in partnership with Coca Cola, you can get a summertime subscription to three different boxes of Happy. And in the box of Happy, <sighs> oh my God, it's, it's three months of summer themed kits, each bringing to life a quintessential seasonal activity with a delicious twist. Quote, Although subscription boxes are hugely popular, today's families are seeking unique experiences instead of more stuff. <laughs> so what, what Maria uh, Hokinson, the executive vice president of marketing at American Dairy Queen Corporation, is saying um, th is that people do love the boxes, mm -hmm. but they hate that the boxes are full of things that would be of use to them that they would want to <laughs> keep in their home. So what you're going to do is you're going to give them $45 for a subscription that will only last three months, definitely. And in the let's just use the June camp inbox as an example. It's got a built-in faux non-flammable campfire. I'll decide what's, I'll decide to what's flammable. Thank you <laughs> exactly, right? Everything's flammable if you try hard enough. It's a non-flammable campfire designed to work with a smartphone to create a warm glow and crackling sounds of a real summer bonfire. I can't, I can't a... imagine any version <laughs> of what you just described that isn't tremendously shitty. That isn't extremely, <laughs> extremely <laughs> shitty. <laughs> there's a D and there's also a DQ camp in shadow puppet storybook what? and two flashlights. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Handmade critters and imagine stories. A do it yourself <laughs> shadow. <laughs> Thank you, DQ. <laughs> a ten dollar DQ gift card to try the June blizzard of the month. Now the arc of this box, <laughs> parent of the year award goes to this guy that said, "Hey kids, good news. Today we're gonna sit around a fake campfire that's powered by Daddy's phone, and we're gonna do shadow <laughs> that we bought from Dairy Queen. And then when you get part of that, you'd say you hate me and you want to go back to Mom's house. I do have a ten dollar." Dairy Queen gift certificate look, look, to you, so we will just bail. When Daddy shines a flashlight, when Daddy shines a flashlight on this page, <laughs> it makes a shadow of let's see here, Dilly Bar Doug on the wall. <laughs> I don't know who fucking Dilly Bar Doug is, Dad. This book sucks, and you I don't suck. Know Dilly Bar is Ron. It's Dad. No, it's Dad. Please. <laughs> <laughs> and so look at that it's the shadow of blizzard bill i'm walking new, i'm walking to mom's house mom's new friend kyle makes his own shadow puppets and he doesn't have to buy them from an ice cream store he can do a fucking monarch butterfly with one hand D dad this is the july box is a waterproof box that opens to reveal a built-in twisting sprinkler hmm in the box in the box. Mm, don't care for that. Oh man, I just can't believe I can't believe it. It includes a splashdown is. activity book. How many other ways are there to moisten <laughs> like children in a play setting? It's it's out of control. Out of control. But anyway, you can get that. 
Uh, you, uh, it, Dairy Queen is not part of the equation in in the obtaining of this. It is literally just you go to DQ Box of Happy, you subscribe, and I guess you have to come in to redeem your um, redeem your gift certificate. Man, happy tastes good. Happy do taste good. Do taste good though. Uh, I have a Yahoo here. A bunch of people sent in. Thank you, everybody. It's Yahoo Answers user Walton who asks, "How do I get a better grip on popcorn?" I have an issue where I drop popcorn all over myself, and it's especially embarrassing in movie theaters. When I first mm-hmm. met my wife, I would always avoid eating popcorn around her and say I'm not hungry, even if I was. Oh, that's mm. so sad. It's pretty sad. I don't know who is scratching hunger itches with popcorn, though. I th- feel like that's why the concession stands, uh, sort of uh, huskier options like a hot dog are available. But that's obviously not the main crux of the question. It's that popcorn is very, very hard to eat. The, I mean, mm. the irony is like if you eat one piece of popcorn at a time, it's no problem. But it is also the most unfulfilling eating experience yeah. on earth. Yeah, I need at least six to seven kernels at a time. I need right? to, I, yeah, I need to ruin this bag. But I keep dropping them, and they do fall on my uh, pants and penis where... <laughs> Uh, then the butter makes things that makes people think that I've done it down there. Just put your fa- just put your face in the hole of the popcorn. Yeah, mm. just put your face mm. in the hole. Put your face in the hole. Just put it. Put your face in the hole. So wait, put your face in the hole. That's what I'm saying. Just put your face in the popcorn hole. Oh no, me- I. And, and if people look at you funny, just look at and be like, I'm trying to avoid making a mess. Mm. I'm trying to be hygienic here, over here. But then while you're talking, the popcorn falls oh. out of your mouth, lands still on the pants penis, and then it's horrible. Horrible embarrassment. It's, it's... What if you get a piece tucked up in your glasses that way, Juice? Oh, I don't wear glasses. I have perfect, beautiful vision. What about in your nose? You got a nose, don't you? You're saying if I get popcorn stuck in my nose, what respite will I have? Yes. Is that what you're cl- saying to me? Is that what you're asking me, a 38 year old man? Yes, Justin. Let me ask you this about I'll your d- fucking great plan, Justin. Do I need? Uh-huh. Do I have to take my glasses off to do this? Because I, I how? Because follow up question: How do I see a dog's purpose on the screen? Put your face in the bucket, dear Liza. Glory to God! You just put your face in the bucket. Do I now, take my glasses? If you're wearing glasses, yes. Answer the fucking. If you're wearing glasses, I would say go eat some carrots and grow up. <laughs> wow! Now, how do I eat Dirty the carrots glasses. without embarrassing myself, Justin? Put your face in the bucket of carrots. And what yeah. if I get a carrot stuck in my glasses? Now that doesn't make any sense, Travis. You're t- you're trying to do a joke. I have very tight bang glasses. Bang. I have very tight glasses. That's what I tell everybody. When they ask me the number one thing about you, I say tight glasses. Tight glasses. glasses that, that has good carrot grip. They touch- Tight glasses, they, wet chair. Yes, they, totally they touch, in. They touch his eyeball meat, and he likes it like that. Yes. Not, not contacts. Don't confuse it for contact. It is just very close to the eyeball. Keeps the eyeball tight in place. Can I, can, I, can I invent something? Sure. Can I invent something right here, right now? Do you need us what to about, stand back? Yeah, give me give me some room to breathe okay. here, because okay. you're cramping me a little bit. Sorry, like tight what, glasses. What about a big popcorn spoon that you can bring into theaters with you, and it's, okay. it would be ladle like, so that when you lift it from the popcorn bucket, you know what's going on in there. You can scout it out. You can figure out the angles and get the perfect amount of corn with each scoop, and then you bring it up to your mouth and, you know, tuck it, tuck into it there. And this is like a I've, halfway point between Justin's sort of monstrous wild bestial suggestion mm-hmm. and, um, you know, a good suggestion. I think Travis will agree with me, and that and that's garbage, right, Travis? Yes. It's close. Now, what do you, th- what do you think about this? Wait, what? A popcorn shovel. Ooh. Okay, and it's kind of vaguely spoon-shaped. And you use the popcorn shovel to just pile the popcorn into your mouth. What do you think about that, Travis? Now, if I may, Justin, that is garbage uh-huh. alone. Okay. But if you include a popcorn funnel to go with the popcorn shovel. Now you're turning this into a fucking double dare well, challenge I'm saying, and I'm wild about maybe, it. Yeah, so like, and maybe, maybe 
the popcorn. Okay, here's what you need. Hey, folks, buckle in. This has just become a two-person operation. You have well, okay. I, the, well, uh, let, just let me finish, Griffin. You have the popcorn funnel on an apparatus that it is positioned above your head. You have a plant. You have a compatriot of some kind sitting in the row behind you. They're slightly raised. They have the popcorn shovel. They will shovel into the funnel for you while you look up, and the and then it funnels into this your sucks. face from there. This and sucks. Th- I had such a good thing, and you guys are trampling all over it. This okay, sucks. Griffin, what about smaller popcorn? <laughs> Call them shreddums. Yeah, just tiny, <laughs> tiny pop. Oh man, shreddums would eat the butter up so much better. Yes. Holy shit, shreddums would be tight, Trav. Yes. Are we talking about big popcorn that we have put in a food processor for approximately zero point no. two seconds, or the corn kernels themselves were smaller when they got baby popcorn? Yes. We take baby yes. corn. We throw this motherfucker in the microwave. Now, what? now we're killing it. Yes, this is why. It, like, if you looked at it up close, you'd be like, "Oh, that's normal popcorn." And then you're like, "Zoom out, idiot!" And then you zoom out, and you're like, "Whoa, shit! That's very tiny compared to that yeah. quarter you've put next to it." Those are kernels of popcorn sitting on, uh, you know, the surface sands of a desert. And then you pan out, and you realize that's my hand, and that's yes. how little these guys are. Yes. Ooh, little popcorn would be good. I would still like my spoon to be in there somewhere, but little popcorn is really good, guys. And what's good about little little pop? Yeah, little pop. What's good about it? You could do my second invention with it, which is the popcorn tube. <laughs> and with this, you could it turns it into a game because you can kind of siphon, you could siphon baby corn off of you know your neighbor or the people sitting in front of you, um, like a powerful elephant trunk. And then we can make a game out of it, and you get a certain number of points by how much micro corn you you snooch. Oh, okay. Are you ready for this? Now, we've well, we've put out microcorn. Tiny corn's been out for a long time now, right? Maybe like 20 years. But now we're starting to get complaints of like, I have to eat so much of it before I fall, feel full, right? Now we introduce giant corn. And one popped kernel is going to like sit, like that's a handful. It's, one, it's a helmet. It's a helmet that yes, you wear. And the you person eat your way out behind, of. Oh, no, the person sitting behind you gets to enjoy it. Yes. So, um, and then after 20 years of that, people are like, well, yes, this is a lot. And then you're like, here's regular popcorn. And yeah. then you reintroduce popcorn classic. I'm a genius. Would you do theming? Like, of how? What? Like, what? Uh, like, remember this popcorn shovel that people used to eat? Yeah, yeah. back when it was just regular, <laughs> plain old, boring popcorn. Before our popcorn hats that we ate off our neighbors. <laughs> what if it had a secret lives of pets? Two logo on Ooh. each kernel. Oh, okay. That's that's badass, uh-huh. man. Now I'm on. Okay, I'm back on board now. <laughs> well, I just think that I just think that would be a fun thing for me and my kids. So, here's like branded thing. shovels. Yeah. Okay. And here's one thing I've got is ear special secret lives of pets to earplugs that you can wear, so you are not distracted by the sound of the person sitting behind you. Eating your hair hat, basically. Now okay. you're, no, but you won't be able to hear the film that way. Shit. No, it plays through the headphones. It plays through the headphones, and maybe you're just I watching see. it on your own private screen. Like you have just like a smaller screen in your hand, so that way you can ignore all the popcorn eating going on around you. I have a question for you guys. Okay. If I'm if I'm DQ box of happy order number one two two three. Does that mean that only 1,222 other people have done this insane thing? Can that be right? That's so many people. It's so many. I think How it's How did people few. even find was, out about it? I kind it. of expected more, more or less. I don't know. It definitely wasn't that number. That number is definitely not what I had in mind. Yeah, you expected. It's 2019, so you expected either 500,000 uh-huh. or three. Right. One of the two. Yeah, I hear you. What, what about just, just corn on the cob? Popcorn on the cob is great. No, not popped. Oh. oh. Just well. Just just raw corn on the cob. Do it yourself, popcorn. Uncooked, unshucked. Mm-hmm. I have a secret air fryer. I live in an apartment with two other girls, and the house shares most things: TV, dishes, game consoles, etc. 
But recently I bought an air fryer and I don't want to share it. I've used it once, Home Alone, and it smells very strongly of food. Yeah. So much so that using it in my room might be a hint that I have it. <laughs> uh, should, I just, <laughs> should I just suck it up and share? How do I better hide that I have this in my room? <laughs> Once a week, it smells like chicken in the house. Have you met us? Vicky smells like chicken in her room. And, a- and you open the door and just, <laughs> you see a flash of blanket. And then there's just this rectangular smoking object in the middle of her floor. And her that right? burns down every time. That. Isn't that weird? <laughs> You ha- you can't, you can't hide box. an air fryer. It's a, it's, a, it's an electrified stink maker, is what you thought. <laughs> oh, that that's my really terrible humidifier. <laughs> it's a bad broken humidifier that I bought. Why can't you share your fabulous fried goods with everybody else? Did you get burned in some other appliance? Like, did they? You share game consoles. Did they like delete your Witcher save? And now you're all, all, all upset about it because I can pretty much promise you that they're not going to delete your air fryer safe. I don't think you're going to lose your progress on or air fryer. Maybe one of their roommates is like a real food experimenter. Like, I tried to make s'mores in the toaster. And it's like, yeah, but you ruined the toast. And so maybe they're worried, like, you tried to air fry, like, an ice cream sandwich. You destroyed it. What were you fucking thinking? You ruined my air fryer. It's just seasoning it. You're just seasoning it. it everything is a little bit of the story <laughs> of this air fryer, and it all adds to the flavor. That's an air fryer's purpose. That's the new movie yeah, that I've been writing fryer. about the life of an air fryer when it was adopted by a young boy, and then it ends up being used by 16 generations of the same family. But, I haven't um, seen a dog's purpose, but I assume that that's I what I would it's never about. have guessed. Yeah, when, you have to imagine. When one robot dog works its way to becoming human by replacing one part at a time. Yeah, until it finally receives a boner from the good doctor. <laughs> doctor, doctor, doctor Light is Mega Man X6. <laughs> the boner one. The, the boner. The, but people, in shorthand, online communities will call it the boner one. I do kind of love the idea. I will say this. I love the idea that... Y- you know, kitchen counter space is always so limited. I love that one of my roommates would take it upon themselves to to save that counter space and uh, just keep it in their room. I do like that part of it. That's kind of you. I yeah. will say, if if I had a roommate who said, you can use it, but you have to come ask me every time, uh, spoiler, I'd never use it. Hmm. Fair, yeah. yes. Let me, p- let me pitch this. It's another of my great inventions. And this will be like my own seasoning, sort of like Old Bay, uh, just like a new sort of blend. Uh, And when you put it on food, it makes it taste just like rancid shit. And then you can can cook your, you say, hey, I got this new air fryer. You cook it for your roommates, but you do season it with (laughs) Griffin's special stuff. And then when they eat it, they're like, wow, this tastes so bad. And you're like, hmm, I guess the air fryer sucks. And then they won't want to use it because of the bad taste I put on it with my powder. I see. I mean, I got, here's the thing, Griffin, I'm having a hard time coming up with jokes because that's such a good idea. And then it's there's just... other uses for, for Griffin's <laughs> it's shit powder is like uh, a prank against a school bully. Uh-huh. Um, convince your dog not to eat something. Convince your dog, may keep a hand, tongue off for the doggy. Uh, prank against the school principal. Justin, um, what would you use Griffin's rancid shit powder on? <laughs> what would you put it on? Tiny popcorn. Mm, well, what, right. yeah, here's the thing. There's definitely, got, people drink Malort. There's definitely some people who would want to eat They're Griffin's like rancid it. shit powder. An, it's not made out of actual shit. It's synthetic chemical. I would not make people eat poop as a joke because that's a crime. But, I but you would make it. You would make them eat it as a bet, right? No, no, it's not poop. It's not poop. But yeah, but the principal. Oh my god, I hate him so much, <laughs> and uh, I would love it if one, his lunch could have a bad stink on Here's it. Here's the I mean, thing: he's so uptight. He's, he's very, so very, he's uptight, uptight, man. Yeah, and you know what? Before you feel bad about it, he's been embezzling from the school. I just want to, I didn't want anybody writing and saying like, I'm a principal and someone made me eat rancid shit powder and I felt terrible about it for days. Like, well, you're probably not an embezzler, so it's probably fine. Justin, what else would you do with my shit powder? 
Uh, I that folks, this has been a great episode. My brother, my brother, me, an advice show for the modern era. We hope you've enjoyed yourself as much as we have. Uh, we've we've had uh so much fun this week. Um, a quick announcement: if you are in the area, I think we still have some tickets. If you want to come see us in Indianapolis or Nashville in, in here in like a week and a half or so, or right? rather a, a couple, week and a half, couple couple days, because this is going up on Monday. Correct. Yeah, so that'll be what the t- 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 the what the tenth. So here, in like five days, we're gonna be at uh, in Nashville. We'll be at the Ryman on June fourteenth and fifteenth. That's the Adventure Zone and Mobin Band, respectively. Then June sixteenth, we're gonna be in Indianapolis at Clouds Memorial Hall, um, and that's June sixteenth. You can get tickets at bit.ly forward slash Become the Monster, and uh, we got a bunch of other shows up there. Uh, we're doing a book tour this July, and then we got a bunch more shows you can go buy tickets for. Um, a lot of them have sold out, so if you haven't bought tickets yet, uh, please uh, come and come and do so. We'd love to see you. And also, uh, we are actually adding two more Adventure Zone stops on the uh, on the, the the grand cross country trip that we're taking. Uh, we are going to be doing Taz uh, in San Diego during uh, Comic Con at the Balboa Theater on Saturday, July twentieth. Uh, and then we are adding a show uh, in Washington, D.C. at uh, the Constitution Hall, uh, and that's going to be Wednesday, September 25th. Uh, both of those are going to be Taz shows, and tickets for those go on sale this Friday, June 14th at uh, noon local time, local to where the shows are taking place. So uh, don't don't sleep on those either. We've got merch. You can go check out the merch. <sighs> yeah, there's new merch. There's a Don't do a hit pin. There's uh, there's one bean juice mugs are still available. If you yeah. could just please, for the love of God, just please. <laughs> we bought so many. Maybe you bought one for someone you love, and they got it, and they loved it. And maybe you accidentally knock it off the counter, and it breaks, and you got to buy a new one. Huh? Have you noticed you don't see people talking about bean juice as much as they do about other classic <laughs> my brother, my brother, me bits? Yeah, yeah us too. Yeah. And we bought so many of these fucking mugs. Bean juice didn't really catch fire the way, well, we were uh, financially anticipating. <laughs> <laughs> Forecast isn't great for the <laughs> brand. <laughs> so maybe, you know, maybe we need to start like a hashtag save bean juice. Where, like, you buy mugs and you send it to network executives to save bean juice. Uh, Don't explain it to them. Don't explain to NBC why you sent them a bunch of bean juice mugs. But that might be the key to saving bean juice. So, thanks to John Roderick and the Long Winters for these are theme song and to departure off the album, Putting the Days to Bed. Great, great, great stuff there. And thanks to Maximum Fun for having us. All them great shows, too, at MaximumFun.org. Uh, and if you haven't already, pre-order book two of the Adventure Zone graphic novel, uh, Murder on the Rockport Limited. It comes out uh, mid-July, I think the 16th or 17th, something like that. Uh, you can go to theadventurezonecomic.com and pre-order that now. What are you waiting for? Go. Uh, here's our final Yahoo. This one was sent in by uh, Joseph. Thank you, Joseph. It's Yahoo Answers user. Sorry, something's gone wrong. Uh, I'm going to call them uh, Craig Ami asks... It has been revealed today that Kelsey Grammer is going to be the new Doctor Who. <gasps> <laughs> My name's Justin McElroy. That's all I want. My name's Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been My Brother, My Brother, and Me. Kiss your dad square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported.